Hallelujah. Indeed, God will give you double for your trouble. Everything is going to be all right. You are listening to Turnaround Thursday with Reverend Tashi Campbell. Thank you for joining me today. I invite you to listen as I read Joshua chapter 7 from verse 2 through to verse 12. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai which is near Beth-Avon, to the east of Bethel, and told them, Go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it, and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to, de to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of the Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. What then will you do for your own great name? The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up. What are you doing down on your face? Israel has sinned. They have violated my covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. They have lied. They have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. They turn their backs and run because they have been made liable to destruction. I will not be with you anymore unless... You destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Now, interestingly, the scripture that was read might not directly, you will not see directly the topic that I want to discuss with us today, but you will get it at the end of the day. I want us to focus on setbacks. Ever thought, have you ever thought that you should have been further than where you are now in life? Are you in a place where you feel like you should have done more in life, that you should have achieved more in life? Have you experienced a setback? A setback is an unanticipated or sudden event which, when it occurs, it delays your plans or forces you to readjust your set times. I want to talk with us about setbacks. And in the, in the context of the scriptures, Joshua faced a setback. Having come from this victory, if you read Joshua before chapter 7, they were victorious and they were on a high. And now 
they found themselves in a situation where they had to go up against the small country AI. They sent spies to look. The spies came back and said, well, there, there are only a few men there. We can send two or three thousand men there. We don't need to weary the whole army because only a few men are there. Except that when they went in, they were thoroughly defeated by this small army. And then the Bible says that the hearts of the soldiers, the hearts of the men begin to, to melt. That means they were now fearful, which is the opposite effect of the victory they had won prior to this battle. And what was the cause of this defeat? The fact that they had sinned, they, that, that there was sin in the camp. They had not expected this defeat because they were high from the victory. But then, because of the sin in the camp, they experienced defeat and this was a setback. This was a setback. And I want to begin there. If you have experienced setback in your life, the first thing to do is to self-examine. Self-examine. Is the, could it be that I was in disobedience to God that caused this setback? Could there be some unrepented sins in my life that I need to, you know, work through with the Lord that I need to repent of? That's the first place to begin to look at this setback. Now, given that our relationship with the Lord is in right standing, we're good with God. You know, we are doing what we're supposed to do and we're living in obedience and we still experience setback. How do we deal with setback? I want to share with us a few, a few pointers from different persons in the scriptures and also even persons within our own generation and in the generations past. Job, for example, faced setbacks, but rather than question God, he was patient. Job we as we know had a great life and then all of a sudden he lost everything he lost his wealth he lost his family his children and job became afflicted in his body that was a terrible setback but he was patient he didn't question god then we look at moses moses was also set back Indeed, God had called Moses to deliver his people. But Moses totally missed God's timing by acting too soon. He struck dead one of the Egyptians one day while he was out looking at them working and so on. And then when it became known, he had to run for his life. And he fled to the wilderness. And in that wilderness for 40 years, he learned obedience. So Moses was set back because he missed God's timing. He acted too soon. And sometimes we act too soon or we act too late. So we have to try our best to be in tandem with God's timing. Amen? For sure. Also, there is Paul. Paul, the Apostle Paul. Many times he was set back, beaten and imprisoned. And we can remember when he was on business for the Lord, going to the place of prayer, he was with Silas that they were beaten and imprisoned and thrown, you know, in, in prison. But their confidence was in God. And while in that situation, they praised God and God delivered them. So I don't know what setback you have faced, but I want to encourage you, my friend. That in the face of your setback, that you exercise patience. In the face of your setback, exercise courage as Joshua did. When the people were defeated, he tore his clothes, he put ashes on his head and he inquired of the Lord to hear from God. What should he do? What was going on? And then he rose up from his feet to do from his knees to do what God had said he was supposed to do and he demonstrated courage in that and then as with Moses in the face of your setback be obedient in the face of your setback have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ so what setback have you been experiencing what setback in your life 
have you experienced? I invite you to change your perspective, to, sh- to look at something else. Be blessed by this song by Jai Kingston. So quickly, I did tell you that I would share with you from other persons who are not in the Bible about this whole matter of setback because I want to really encourage someone. Franklin Roosevelt, who was one of the United States presidents, he became partially paralyzed at 39 years old. After vacationing in Canada, Roosevelt developed polio, which eventually left him paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of his life. But even though he couldn't walk, he went on to lead the country as one of the most respected and memorable presidents in history. Then there is Chris Carr. She turned her cancer into a business of hope and healing. In the year 2003, Carr was a 32-year-old New Yorker just enjoying her life. And then a regular checkup with the doctor resulted in a diagnosis of a rare and incurable stage 4 cancer called epithelioid and I can't call the rest of that but it's a stage 4 cancer existing in her liver and lungs now instead of succumbing to the disease Carr decided to challenge her diagnosis head on what did she do? she attacked her cancer with a brand new nutritional lifestyle and turned her experience into a series of successful self self help books and documentaries eventually she launched her own wellness website which is followed by 40,000 people at least and today Carr is celebrating a decade of thriving with cancer and well more than a decade now because it was 2003 and she's now revered as one of the most prominent experts in healthy living. Can you imagine talking about setbacks? And I'm not yet finished. Let allow me to give you two more examples. Thomas Edison. He failed 1000 times it is believed before creating the light bulb. Although the exact number of tries has been debated, ranging from 1000 to 10000 attempts, It's safe to say that Edison tried and failed a lot of times before he successfully created his beacon of light. His response to his repeated failures, what does he say? He says, and I quote, I have not failed. I have just tried or I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Isn't that amazing? Talking about setbacks. I want to encourage somebody not to give up not to give up and the final example bethany hamilton she had her arm bitten off by a shark hamilton started surfing when she was just a child and at the age of 13 an almost deadly shark attack resulted in her losing her left arm she was back on her surfboard one month later and two years after that She won first place in the Explorer Women's Division of the NSSA National Championships. Talk about determination. And I want to encourage someone who is facing setback, who has faced setbacks in life, to continue to be determined because God is able. What is today's turnaround strategy? Today's turnaround strategy is this. See your setback as another opportunity to make your product better, to make your strategy more effective, another opportunity to go at it again. Never give up. Don't stop unless the Lord instructs you otherwise. See your setbacks as another opportunity. 
I don't know what your setback is. Perhaps you have been wanting to write a book and maybe you've done a first draft and it has not been accepted or maybe the person you asked to look at it doesn't appreciate it. Perhaps you want to start a business and it has failed. Maybe you are praying about launching a ministry and it just seems as if every time you step out to launch, there is some kind of setback. Well, my friends, be encouraged. Your setback is just another opportunity for you to become even greater. Never give up. Don't stop unless the Lord instructs you otherwise. Let us pray. Indeed, mighty God, we send Judah first. We praise you because you are God. We honor you for your grace and your mercy in our lives. We thank you for the privilege of your presence, O God. And we thank you, Lord God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit with us. For Lord God Almighty, we acknowledge the fact that in the face of setbacks, we trust in a God with whom all things are possible. And so, Lord, we are grateful this morning for the setbacks that you have allowed into our lives. Because in the face of these setbacks, we can have confidence in you. In the face of these setbacks, Lord, we understand that you're teaching us to be patient. You're teaching us to, to have courage. You're teaching us to be obedient. You're teaching us to trust in you. So, Lord God Almighty, we just commit ourselves to you. We commit our dreams to you. We commit our plans to you. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will empower us and refresh us again to advance your kingdom in all that we are doing. So, mighty God, whether our setbacks be academic, whether our setbacks be in the, in the form of writing a book, launching a business, starting a ministry, whatever it is, mighty God, we give it to you. We trust in you and we ask you, Lord God, to lead us. We repent of any impurity and sin in our lives so that we can be right with you as we seek to be led by you we give you thanks we give you praise and we we we, we honor you in jesus name we pray can you say amen amen mm -hmm.